The second edition of Descent Journeys in the Dark is a reimagining of Fantasy Flight Games' classic dungeon crawler by designers Adam Sadler, Corey Konieczka, and Daniel Lovett Clark. In Descent, a team of heroes faces off against an evil overlord on a series of quests. A single quest plays with two to five players, and it lasts about two hours. There aren't any expansions to this particular edition, but there is the conversion kit, which allows you to bring characters from the first version forward into this game. So players start Descent by choosing a quest and making one player the Overlord. The Overlord is then going to set up the starting map, tokens, and monsters for that quest, and reading out the victory conditions for both sides. Each quest is going to consist of two encounters that play out one after the other. The other players each choose a character and a class that matches that character's hero archetype. They collect their character sheet, activation card, and skill and item cards, and place their miniature on the board. Each round of Descent consists of a hero turn and an overlord turn. At the start of each hero turn, the hero players get to decide which order they're going to act in. Then, the first player begins by making any changes they want to their equipped items while respecting item slot requirements. Next, they take any two actions from the following list. Move, attack, use a skill, rest, search, stand up, revive, open a door, or a special action. They can take two of the same action in a turn. So a hero can move a number of spaces that's equal to their listed speed, and you can also split up a movement with another action. This means that, for example, a hero with a speed of four could move two spaces, then attack, and then move two more. To attack, a player rolls the colored dice associated with their weapon. A melee weapon can attack squares adjacent to the character. If you have a ranged weapon, you can attack any target within line of sight. So if the attacking player rolls the X on the blue die, then they miss. In order to hit with a ranged attack, they have to roll a ranged number that's equal to or greater than their distance from the target. If the attack succeeds, it deals damage equal to the number of hearts that were rolled. Any surge symbol that's rolled is going to trigger special weapon effects that might initiate a condition, let you deal extra damage, or force defense die rerolls. The defender rolls defense dice indicated on their character sheet or monster card. They have to roll enough shields on those dice to counteract the amount of hearts rolled on the attacker's dice. Any hearts that are not cancelled by shields count as damage, so you take damage tokens for those. If you get as many damage tokens as you have health points, then as a character, you're knocked out. As a monster, you're killed. So a knocked out hero immediately takes full damage and full fatigue. On their next turn, their only action is going to be to stand up, which lets them regain health and stamina based on a die roll. Now a knocked out hero can also be revived by another hero on that hero's turn, in which case they get to stand up, and on their own turn, they still take their two regular actions. Opening or closing a door takes one action, and searching takes one action. To search, a player stands on or adjacent to a search token. They spend their action, and then they take the top card off the search deck. Many quests also ask you to make skill tests. To do this, you roll one grey die and one black die. If you get a number equal to or less than your skill value, then you pass the test. Any special ability or skill that's marked with an arrow costs an action, and will usually also have a fatigue cost. Now, if you take enough fatigue tokens to match your stamina value, you can't use any more skills with a fatigue cost, and any fatigue that you're dealt is going to be taken as damage instead. A character that takes a rest action will regain all of their stamina at the end of their turn. A character's heroic feat can be used once per encounter, and any items are used based on the text written on their card. Once a hero has taken their two actions, they turn over their activation card and it's the next player's turn. So after all the heroes have gone, the Overlord starts by placing new monsters on the board according to the quest rules and drawing an Overlord card. These cards give the Overlord special powers that they can use at any point during their turn. They're then going to activate all of their monsters in groups, so each monster of the same type is going to take two actions in turn. Monsters can take the same actions as heroes, except that they can only attack once per turn, and they can't stand up or revive another monster. The turns alternate between the Overlord and the heroes until one side completes their objectives. Between encounters, heroes keep all of their damage, but regain their stamina. Overlords keep all of their cards. 
The winner of the second encounter wins the quest. So Descent also has rules for a campaign mode where players gain new skills and new items in between quests, as well as an epic variant that makes for more challenging one-off quests. So in comparison with the first edition of Descent, the second edition is much simpler. It's got a much more condensed gameplay, a smaller box even. It's quicker to play. You're gonna be able to get through an entire quest, so two encounters in about two hours, which is a big change from the last version. So it's quite simple to learn. You're gonna end up getting right to the fun, right to the meat of this game very quickly, which you're really gonna like. There's always a negative though to games like this, which have one DM character because that means that you've got one player that needs to take on that role and be against everybody else at the table. So that's always a negative for games like this. There's always going to be somebody who doesn't want to pick up that or, or somebody who ends up having to do it all the time. However, I do think that this second version of Descent does a better job of making the Overlord's job more interesting and perhaps a little bit less scripted than it was the first time around. Another potential drawback of a game that's been distilled down like this is that the quests in this version of Descent feel pretty bite-sized. You can get through one in only two hours, which is really awesome, but if you want to get that epic adventure game feel, then you're probably going to want to play multiple quests or get right into the game's campaign mode. Now that campaign mode is both really engaging and highly replayable because the quests that you get are going to change a little bit every time, both because you're choosing the quests and because how well you do in early ones affects what's available later. That replay, replay value also really comes in with the different character and class combinations that you get. And this is especially true if you bring stuff in from the conversion kit. Um, if you don't have the first version of the game and you don't mind proxying the miniatures, then you can bring it anyway just to get all of those new characters, especially because some of them are really cool. And this game really is about the characters. Uh, for me, the best part of Descent is that moment when your party finally clicks and you realize how to make the particular character and class combination you have work best for you. So that that monster that was about to eat your face a second ago is now not nearly as much of a challenge because your party is cooperating really awesomely and it just totally rewards that kind of cooperative play.